Streamers use a numpad to access shortcuts to move between scenes or camera angles. But what if you put a numpad directly on the mouse, so that you won't need to leave the mouse to access those shortcuts? Does it compromise in gaming performance for fast-paced FPS games? And could it improve productivity? The main cause of concern using an MMO mouse are the buttons on the side, which seem too clustered together. After using the SteelSeries RX9 for a couple of months now, I haven't had any issues with misclicking in games or work. The issue I have been facing is from the SteelSeries GG software, but more on that after the physical aspect of the mouse. The Aerox 9's shape is amazingly ergonomic since it pushes my hand into a more relaxed position, heavily tapered to the right, putting more pressure underneath the pointer and middle finger knuckle area making it more comfortable to tilt my grip more to the right. Reducing the amount of pronation, the twisting across of the bone in the forearm, but not all the way like a vertical mouse. Both primary mouse buttons have comfort grooves that match the ergo position. I found when gaming, I move into a claw position, where my pointer finger lands on the perforated section of the left mouse button, while the middle finger just barely grazes it. I wasn't bothered by this, but it might be a deal breaker for you. How does this shape feel in FPS gaming? The combination of the force tilt to the palm and the side buttons under my thumb makes me want to relax my grip more than usual. With the RX9, I normally fall into a carpal stabilized claw grip, where the fingertips and the base of my palm contact, where the flare of the back of the mouse fills the base of my palm for a stable grip when in the heavily tilted hand position. I found that forcing a knuckle claw grip, my preferred usual grip, where only the fingers and underside of my knuckles are contacting, adds uncomfortable pressure to the knuckle area. The fingers are no longer sitting properly in the comfort grooves and moves the thumb back, putting the forward buttons out of reach. At the weight of 89 grams, the mouse feels well stabilized in the carpal stabilized claw grip, but does slightly lean front heavy, making a full palm grip feel more better balanced. Given the RX9 is a large MMO mouse, fingertip grip is not remotely comfortable and loses access to all but one side button. The main feature of the RX9 are the side buttons, but why bother creating these shortcuts if you can access them on the keyboard? It's mostly for ease of use when accessing keys on the far right hand side where you'd actually have to leave your mouse or move really, really far. I either have to look down and find the button or move my arm into an awkward position. Funnily enough, putting the shortcuts on the mouse also makes it more ergonomic for the left hand. Each button is easy to identify and I break it down into four sections. The top row has a sharp edge if pressing directly down on them but can be easily accessed by pushing the thumb upwards. In Apex, I have the top row as zero for survival or heat shields, G for grenade, and V for melee. The middle row is where the natural resting position is, with the forward 5 button having an indication knob and the thumb landing directly on H. I have this row set to nothing on the first two, but H on 13 to easily access secondary abilities of specific legends like Catalyst or Vantage. Similarly, on the bottom row, nothing on the first two, with B on 10 to easily change firing modes. Lastly, there's the far row, which is harder and more awkward to reach regardless of what grip you use, making the row easy to differentiate, allowing me to put items I use often enough to create shortcuts but not too often that I don't need it. Minus 3 for medkit, 2 for shield battery, and 1 for map. I even have the DPI button as a play pause button to pause media in the background. Earlier I mentioned I didn't have issues misclicking. It's not just because I have a bunch of buttons blanked out. I train to not death grip my mouse in games to help improve aim. In productivity on the other hand, there are a lot more shortcuts that you can put on the mouse buttons. Here's where the SteelSeries Aerox 9 starts to fall apart. Most of it is because of the SteelSeries GG software, which is 5 pieces of software software bundled in one, effectively adding more bloatware. Sonar, which is an equalizer, moments for instant gameplay capture, and for some reason, 3D aim trainer. Worst part is, the homepage is just advertisements to buy more of their products after you've already bought one. Why is that the first thing shown instead of engine for device configuration? Not only that, there's a giveaway section? to advertise games, I guess? SteelSeries probably doesn't get paid for them since Engine has terrible drawbacks despite its features. The good is that Engine has active application detection to automatically change mouse profiles. The bad part is the mouse stops working for about five seconds every time it switches. In games, it's not a big drawback, but in most work settings, there's two to three applications instead of a main one, making me wait five seconds after transferring videos onto my video pool taking that long for me to be able to use the mouse again. The other drawback is limited Windows shortcuts. Despite being able to record macros, trying to record the Windows key will activate the Windows Start menu but will not be recorded. With no way to record specific Windows macros or shortcuts other than the pre-installed ones, I can see this being a pain for tech support where I would normally have the Windows Snip shortcut to screenshot issues. On the other hand, when in actual editing, the issues are not bad other than moving in between applications. I'm able to fill most of the side buttons with a shortcut or 
keys for easy access to the right hand side of the keyboard. For my setup, most of the shortcuts are made so that I won't have to leave the mouse to access them. The top row uses I for in, a trim right macro, and a trim left macro. Middle row is O for out, A to return to pointer, and B for blade tool. The bottom row, F9 for insert, space for play pause, and L for fast forward. I wanted to put the side scroll on the far row, but the Eryx 9 already has scroll tilt, allowing me to slowly move left and right on the timeline. However, I don't like the scroll tilt as the scroll wheel is set too low, and pressing control while scrolling is easy to access to quickly move across the timeline anyway. I've actually set 3 to alt because I keep hitting the windows key instead of alt to zoom in and out of the timeline with scroll. I can easily recommend an MMO mouse to improve both gaming and productivity, however I wouldn't recommend the Eryx 9 because of the issues with software. While it does well in gaming with its highly ergonomic shape and balance, with the addition of easy access buttons, it takes a massive hit in productivity from SteelSeries Engine, with its lack of window shortcuts and unresponsive profile switching. For a mouse that leans more into gaming improvements without sacrificing the ease of use in productivity tasks, check out this video. For more content on tech to improve on both productivity and gaming, subscribe. I'm your host Naka, have a nice one. For my first time using an MMO mouse, I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would.